Hi guys, I went to the barber the other day and I was trying to think of a way to connect with him and trying to be friendly. So I sat down while he was cutting somebody else's hair and I was thinking, uh, what can I say? And so I sort of cracked a joke and I said, uh, hey, Bruno, uh, I'm, I'm working on this new gel that will stop my hair from growing. Don't you think that's a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> and he, costs, he looks across at me it's with a frown and he's like, that's not a good idea. That'll put me out of business. So I thought it was quite funny. We had a bit of a laugh and then uh, he cut my hair later and then I left. And as I was leaving, I said, yeah, I should patent that gel, you know, to stop the hair from growing. And But uh, it was sort of a humorous way of connecting with my barber. And uh, so I'm wanting to build relationship with him and sometimes humor can be a, a really good stepping stone. So today we want to encourage you. We're building a series on relationships and we want to help one another to grow stronger in our relationships. And so we want to inspire you today and encourage you that relationships are dynamic, they're difficult, but they're worth the investment of time and energy. And God wants us to help in, in our relationships. So uh, the older I get, the more I believe that human relationships, close human relationships, constitute a major part of our lives. These relationships are so important to us that you know even our foundation of our life can waver and, and lose its orientation when these relationships go astray. And uh, it's just so true. So I'm still uh, working on controlling my words and controlling my emotions so that I don't hurt people, that I can manage my relationships. And it's an ongoing struggle. Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we need to keep these things in mind. And some of the most stressful events in life are, are surrounding relationships, you know, death and marriage, death of a loved one, a spouse, a family member. These things are very intense events in our lives and they're all surrounding relationships. So relationships are very important. So we want to give you a vision for having great relationships. Specifically, if you uh, want to get married and have a great marriage, we need to give you a vision for what a great marriage can look like and what's the pathway, What? how do I get there? Does it just click like they say in Hollywood, you know, or is it actually a rocky road with a lot of effort involved? So we want to encourage you today that it's possible. So let's pray today. Father God, we pray that you would help us today to know what you want us to do, to love people, to build great relationships, to treasure people, to treasure the relationships that you give to us. And we pray today that you would help us, you'd be with us, and Lord, that you would uh, give us wisdom in the way we begin to relate and the way we consider our relationships more and more. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so good to have you with us today. We really pray that God would bless you. And I just want to start out by explaining a uh, previous couple of sermons I did was talking about God's sovereignty. And we looked at King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. We looked at King Josiah in 2 Kings 23. And we looked at the hand of God upon their lives and how God brought about his plan and his purpose that God is sovereign over the affairs of men. And it's really important to understand this. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, where God uses uh, King Baasha to actually execute judgment on Nadab, the son of Jeroboam. You can have a look at that passage. It's really fascinating. The way God is working through the free will choices of human beings and yet God is still bringing about his plan. So what does that mean for us today? It means that we can have great security that God can bring about his purpose for our lives. Even though we make mistakes, even though other people make mistakes, God is still able to do a great work. He's still able to bring about His purpose for our life. What does that mean? It means I'm secure. You know, no matter where I go, I've been to dangerous places. I've been to Pakistan. I've been to Africa, to India. It gets a bit tense at times. But I'm confident that God is with me. And no matter what happens, I'm confident that God's purpose will come about. 
Amen. And so that gives me a security. That gives me a, a secure platform on which all my relationships are built. So my security is not built in my relationship with my parents. You know, recently my parents uh, passed away. My dad passed away about three years ago. My mother just this last January. And it, it does destabilize us. And maybe some of you, you've had somebody pass away recently. And that's a very difficult thing to manage. Maybe a husband's passed away or a parent's passed away or a close friend. It does destabilize us. It does shake us. It, it's like, wow, life will never be the same. I will never have a coffee with my mother on the beach ever again. That will never happen. It, it's emotionally stressful. It's like, wow, you know, my life is being turned up and down. What's going on? And we need to have that security that God is my security. He's my platform. He will bring about His purpose for my life. Even though these key relationships may not work out. God is my foundation and He gives me that security to be able to keep going, to be able to keep loving, to be able to keep moving ahead. Amen. So that's why we did the couple of sermons on God's sovereignty so that we have a security in God and not look for security in other things. And that is a great starting point for all of our relationships. Amen. So my own insecurity influences the, the way I relate to others. So please keep that in mind today, guys. Okay. So I become more secure the more I train myself. I do the best I can do. Then I trust God to rely upon His sovereign hand in my life, even in marriage, even in any relationship. So Ephesians 6.13 tells us, Having done all therefore to stand. So I do everything I can. Then I can stand strong, stand confident. God, you will do your part. Amen. So we can rely on Him. So we want to uh, start out the topic of our titled uh, sermon today is You Can't Handle the Truth. And uh, we sort of want to turn that around where you can handle the truth. But the line, you can't handle the truth, comes from a movie called A Few Good Men. It was made in 1992 with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. And they're acting out in a courtroom where this Colonel Jessup is uh, explaining why it was expedient for this Marine to be killed in order to save more lives. And of course, it's corrupt. And of course, he's just lying and, and uh, he's exposed and, you know, being uh, convicted eventually. But during the conversation in the, law, in the courtroom, he says to the lawyer, he says, you can't handle the truth, you know. And so it's quite a famous line. But we want to encourage you today that you can handle the truth. Sometimes we don't want to know the truth. That's a different question. And I'm a bit like that sometimes too. Uh, I remember uh, when Helen was chasing me and we were at a wedding and uh, one of my friend's wedding and I was sitting at this reception table and I was talking to this other girl a little bit too much. And afterwards, Helen said to me, you were talking to that girl way too much. And I was like, uh, I don't think so. And it, <laughs> but she was definitely and said, yes, you were. And you were too friendly. I was like, really? And I really didn't want the feedback. It's like, I didn't want to know. I was like, what's going on here? You know, I'm just trying to be friendly. I'm just trying to go through my life. And suddenly I'm finding out the truth that I'm a bit too friendly with the wrong people. I'm not showing enough attention to the right people. And now I'm in trouble. I'm not navigating my relationships wisely. And so the truth is coming up to me. And I didn't really want to know, you know, but we need to change our attitude around to say, yes, I want to know the truth. So human beings, we, we, we don't want to change. That's what we need to come against. We need to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, I don't really like changing. I, I like the way I am. I found my little niche. I found my the way I relate to people and I don't particularly like changing. Uh, but if we want to have a vision for better relationships, stronger relationships, a better marriage, more stable marriage, then we need to be willing to face the truth. We need to be willing to change. So that's my job today in the brief time that I have with you is to persuade us to say, yes, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to receive feedback. I'm willing to have somebody come to me and say, hey, what you said over there, that was
was out of line. Oh, really? Oh, you know, it's painful, but that's how we grow. That's how we improve. That's how we mature. We get stronger. We get wiser. We become more sensitive. We're more aware, more alert in our relationships so we don't hurt people. And so we can build a more sensitive, loving relationship, especially in our marriage with our kids and close friends. Amen. So it's very, very important. So human beings, we can't always handle everything all at once. Jesus said to his apostles during the Last Supper uh, in John 16, verse 12, he says, I have many more things to say to you, but you can't handle it now. It's almost like the same same line. You can't handle the truth. He says you can't, uh, the actual words, but you cannot bear them now. Isn't that interesting? So even Jesus might have a thousand things to say to us, but he only tells us one or two that we can handle. So he's gracious and and gives us the truth that we can handle. But we need to be open to people when they give us correction and guidance and direction because it's for our good. Amen. I know somebody, I spoke to them uh, many years ago and I said, hey, why don't you get your group of people together, get your family together and sort out these issues. You know, you can clear the air and get it all done. And that person said, that will never happen. I was like shocked. I was like, wow, that will never happen. Okay, it's, it never did happen. Uh, it never will happen. And all those issues have still not been cleared up. So it's not good. Relationships stagnate. They get into a rut and bitterness takes root when issues are not addressed. And so it's not good, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to open up and be willing, be vulnerable, front a few issues and be willing to say, I can change. Amen. So real key message for us today is we need to be willing to change to build stronger relationships. We can't just keep going the way we're going because relationships will not get better. They just do not get better because we watch a Hollywood movie and they're like, oh, they're in love. You know, that's not how it works. Real love means I confront my selfishness, I deal with my anger problem, I confront my pride, and I say, hey, I need to humble myself, I need to be willing to admit I've got these faults, I've got these problems, and I'm going to work through them so I can be a more loving person. It's so important, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't lie to ourselves, we don't deceive ourselves, and we just go along in a bubble and we hurt people and we never really get to the potential of the relationships that God wants for us. God wants us to have great relationships. He loves us and He is so sensitive. He is so kind and He wants us to embody the same fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's great. Amen. So we need to be willing to change. If we genuinely desire stronger, more intimate relationships, we need to start with ourselves. Am I a secure person? Do I believe in the sovereignty of God upon my life? Have I got that as a foundation? Am I desiring a better relationship? Am I desiring to look at my own faults and not just point out other people's faults, but say, hey, maybe I've got areas I need to change. I need to be willing to come under the microscope. And that's how I can become a better person and embrace more people and different sizes and shapes of people because I'm more gracious. So I'm secure because God is my Father and He can bring about His purpose for my life. And I'm not afraid of what happens to me. Amen. God can help us. So this foundation of security sets us up for development as a growing, learning, maturing person. Amen. So some cultures tell us that it's okay to lie in order to make you feel good. So they'll lie, say, oh, you did great, you did oh, fantastic, you know, and they're really thinking it was terrible. <laughs> but you did great, yeah. You know, that's not good. You know, lying to make people feel good is, is not wise. Eventually, your lies will will just fall to the ground and reality kicks in 
and it's, it's just shallow. So Moses warns those tribes living on the eastern side of the Jordan River that they must also cross over and fight the others for their land. And he says in Numbers 32 verse 23, If you do not do so, then take note. You have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. So ladies and gentlemen, we can't hide things. We need to realise that we can be deceitful or we can lie to people and we can say things that we don't mean and we, it makes it look good in the short term. But eventually your sin will find you out. Eventually our deception, our lie will be exposed. The shallowness will be tested and the relationship will not be strong because it's based on insincerity and it can't prevail. We need to have that sincerity, that honesty, that, that depth in order to survive the pressures and tensions of life. Amen. So if you want to build strong relationships, we've got to work hard and build a deep foundation, guys. Amen. It means we've got to deal with issues. And we want to talk about that in the next uh, few weeks. We want to help us, help one another to grow in the way we relate. Because it's the number one commandment God gives us is love one another. Love God and love people. So how do we do that? It's all through our ability to relate. It's our ability to communicate. Amen. So John chapter 8, verse 31, 32, Jesus said to those Jews who believed in Him, If you abide in My word, you are My disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. The truth shall set us free. So we need it to receive a love for the truth, and then we can grow, we can mature, we can develop. But if we believe the lie and we don't want the truth, then we can't grow and we end up deceiving ourselves as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 warns us that we fall into that deception because they did not receive a love for the truth. Amen. So Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So let's come to Jesus. Jesus will reveal the truth to us so that we can grow and His Holy Spirit will convict us and lead us. Isn't that great? So the truth will set us free. The truth will help us to grow. And I can become a more loving person if my selfish habits are exposed. The problem is I have a blind spot. I don't see my own selfishness. So I need to receive feedback from others saying, Brendan, hey, you're selfish. What? That's impossible. I can't possibly be selfish. Wakey, wakey. We all got selfishness operating in our lives. We all got some pride. We've all got some fears. We've all got some insecurities. We can all change. We can all grow. We can all develop. Amen. So guys, let's make a decision today. I can handle the truth. I can change. I want to be a more mature, more loving person. Amen. Craig Rochelle says, we cannot overcome something we are not willing to confront. We can't grow if we're not willing to confront our weaknesses. So if my bad habits are degrading the precious relationships that God has given me with my family and friends, then I need to face my bad habits. I don't want to go through the next 20, 30, 40 years of my life with bad habits that are degrading the most important relationships around me and everybody else knows and I don't. And I'm just an obnoxious person, irritating and uh, upsetting people and I'm just oblivious and I'm just doing my own thing. That's not wise. As Christians, we need to be have a more loving, more gracious perspective. Amen. So say to the person next to you, you can handle the truth. You can handle the truth. Don't be like Colonel Jessup in the movie saying, you can't handle the truth. Don't be like that. Say, you can handle the truth. We can handle it. We can desire it. We can move on and we can do better in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so in conclusion, we want to encourage you you know, don't, don't go around picking on people, being critical. I'm not advocating that. We need to be wise. And we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more. 
Today we're talking about a willingness to be corrected, a willingness to learn more, a willingness to grow, a willingness to change. Amen. Let's begin from there. How we work that through, we'll, work, we'll discuss that a bit more later. But the key is that we can handle the truth, we can handle the feedback, and we can grow through that. So we can grow, mature, we can be more kind, more understanding, more forgiving, more sensitive, more sincere, more f loving. Wouldn't that be great? We can get there, ladies and gentlemen, if we work together and we're willing to forgive, we're willing to work it through, we're willing to change. These things are possible. And life is wonderful when you have great relationships. You know, you can be the CEO and be miserable. You know, joy doesn't come from worldly promotion. Joy doesn't come from having a billion dollars in your bank. It doesn't last. Joy comes from the love and the Spirit of God when we connect with people and we just love people and we accept people. And we, we yeah, everyone's got faults. Everyone's got problems. We forgive, we accept, we're like God. God accepts us, He forgives us. My goodness, if He can do that to us, we can do it to one another, amen? So uh, in, in conclusion, we wanna stop hurting those we love and we wanna build stronger, better marriages, better relationships. And if you're single, please plan to get married one day. Plan, what type of person do I need to become when I get married? What type of relationship do I imagine I'm gonna have? We need to plan and we need to work on our own heart and our own relationships, amen? So that's great. Praise the Lord. Um, just want to uh, close in prayer. Uh, we'll just sing a song right now and then we'll, uh, then we'll close in prayer. you, somebody that you love has hurt you, and God wants you to forgive today. Unconditional, just wipe the slate. Yeah, but he did this, this, and she did this, this. Wipe it all clean. Just forgive. Just erase. Oh, but they did this. this. Just zip. Just forgive. Amen. That's what God does to us. He takes all our garbage he forgives it and he throws it in the depth of the sea. And some of us need to practice forgiving, which is, okay, I forgive. I delete it. I remove it from my memory, just like God does to us. And that means we open a doorway for love. There's no more resentment, no more bitterness. Anger loses its foothold and we can walk in joy and peace and love because we're practicing that forgiveness. So it's very important, guys. People are going to hurt you for the rest of your life. We've got to practice forgiving, practice letting it go, practice deleting it from our mind. And it's not easy. It takes practice. It really does. But we can do it. Amen. 
So I just really want to encourage you today. Some of you today, I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ, to have faith in God, to say, God, I believe you exist. God, I believe in you. And it's not an emotional decision. It's not a decision based on experience, but it's a decision based on the reality of God, that everything we see around us has been created and that there is an awesome God who cares for us and loves us and nurtures us every day. And historically, we know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into the world to give his life a ransom for many. The perfect Son of God dying for evil people unheard of, unbelievable, yet that's what he did. And he rose again from the dead to demonstrate to us that we have eternal life if we're faithful and loyal to him. Amen. You know, some of us, some people question and say, well, there's no God. You know, things just evolved. Ladies and gentlemen, that's ridiculous. That's like saying to Steve Jobs that my iPhone, that it had just evolved. Like, no, the ideas and the design and the technology does not just evolve. It's planned, it's purposed, it's, it's created. And you just look at your eye. I was just reading this uh, earlier. You know, the human eye can detect one, eye, one light particle and it, it can see a candle flame 48 kilometers away on a clear night. That's spectacular. And yet it can also detect 200 million light particles per second. 200 million, boom, boom. Isn't that fantastic? This guy calculated it. He went through all the physics and he's saying our eyes can, can detect 200 million particles per second. Now that technology is unbelievable. It is not random. The, the, you can look at this, uh, the human eye can discriminate over one million different colors. And if you're gifted, it can go up to more than 10 million different colors your human eye can detect. That is mind-blowing sensitivity that the brain and the eye can, can uh, visualize these things. And we say, oh, it just evolved. That's nonsense. We have been created by an awesome, majestic God. And we need to honor Him by saying, God, I want to follow you. I want to give my life to you. You are so great. You are so awesome. I don't want to live for myself any longer. I want to follow Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. We can do that. We can honor God and we can say, God, help me. Fill me with your spirit today. So if that's you, we'd like you to click on the hand. We'd like you to talk to our chat host and we'd like you to keep coming online to church. And uh, if you're in the region, come to our physical church services. When we renew again, we'll be going to two, two services in a few weeks time, hopefully, God willing. So do come, get involved, begin to seek after God, begin to pray, begin to talk to God and God will help you. Amen. Hallelujah. So just in closing, we want to encourage all of us to be willing to change. You know, don't be like Colonel Jessup and say, you can't handle the truth. No, we can handle the truth. We can grow. We can become the people that God has called us to be. So today, let's not harden our hearts. In the day we hear His voice, let us respond to the Spirit of God and say, yes, Lord, I can change. So let's pray. Father God, we pray right now for those that need to forgive. We pray, Lord, that I would speak the words, I forgive, and I renounce that bitterness. Lord, we pray you help our people right now, watching on screen, that they will begin to speak out that word, I forgive person X. Uh, not the person X is a real person, but you forgive Bill or uh, Mary or Joe or whatever the person's name is, you speak that out. I forgive that person. I love that person. Begin to speak it out by faith and uh, say to God, God, I'm willing to change. Lord, I'm willing to grow. Father God, I need to improve. I want beautiful relationships. I want great relationships, great friendships. How do I get there? Lord, change me. Help me. Show me the truth about myself. Help me, God, to be more like Jesus. And the Spirit of God will show us. And if you haven't committed your life to God, we want to encourage you to hit that hand. And Father God, we just pray.
pray for all those deciding today to say, yes, I want to follow Jesus Christ. We just pray your spirit would fill them and bless them and encourage them today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Remember, life is worth living because God loves you and He cares so much for you. So have a great week. Uh, we'll see you Tuesday night. We'll see you next Sunday. And keep, keep going, guys. Amen.